Hi everybody, I'm Mr. Pollard. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a tool called a spectrophotometer to collect a data set that will be graphed to create a standard curve, which can be used to determine the concentration for an unknown solution. This experiment uses spectrophotometry to analyze samples of iron-3 chloride by using the Beer-Lambert law to determine the concentration of an unknown sample. A stock solution of 0.4 molar iron-3 chloride is used to create a number of samples which will be used to create a standard curve. A 1 tenth dilution is created by diluting 1 milliliter of stock solution to a new volume of 10 mils. I'll add a link to a video which discusses dilution calculations. Five dilutions are created to give samples of 0.04, 0 0.08, 0 0.2, 0 0.32, and 0.4 molar iron-3 chloride. The spectrophotometer is calibrated using a blank. This is a cuvette filled with pure water. The blank should have a transmittance of 100% because it doesn't contain any of the compound which will absorb any of the light. For this experiment, the light is set at a wavelength of 625 nanometers. Each sample will be tested to determine its percent transmittance. First, we see testing of the 110 dilution. The transmittance for the 110 dilution worked out to be 97.1%. Next, we'll test the 15th dilution. The transmittance for this sample was 96.3 the one half dilution sample had a percent transmittance of 90.3. The four fifths dilution sample had a percent transmittance of 83.8. .8. And finally, the 0.4 stock solution had a transmittance of 80.6%. Let's talk a little bit more about transmittance. Transmittance is the light that passes through the sample. In this experiment, I used a wavelength of 625 nanometers. Now the transmittance is going to be found by dividing the transmitted light or the output by the incident light, which was the input. This varies as a function of the sample concentration. Using the transmittance, you can calculate absorbance using the equation A is equal to the negative log of the transmittance. If we look at an example, it's important to remember that we need to use the decimal form of the percent transmittance. Using 0.971, we can calculate the absorbance and that will work out to be 0.0128 for the first sample. Here we see the data table with the absorbance values filled in. Next, we'll create a standard curve using Microsoft Excel. So first I'm going to go ahead and input the data into the sheet. I'll put concentration in the first column, that's the independent variable. I'll put absorbance in the second column, that's where I want the dependent variable. Once I have the data entered, I can go about creating my graph. So I'm going to click and highlight my data, and then I will insert a chart. I want to do an XY scatter plot. Here you can see that we're able to resize the graph, and I can change the title if I want to do that. Next, what I'm going to do is add a trend line by right-clicking on one of the data points. I do want to select linear, and then I'm going to display the equation and the R-squared value on the graph. Next, you can see that you can resize the font for the displayed equation, so I can make that bigger, and I'm also able to move that to a better location on the graph, so it's easier to read. Now I'll go ahead and edit the axes titles on the graph. So for the y-axis, we want to use absorbance. That was the dependent variable in the experiment. The x-axis, the independent variable, will change to concentration, which was measured in units of molarity. Now we'll look at finding the concentration of the unknown sample. So the unknown sample of iron-3 chloride, we see here being compared to the different dilutions we created earlier. And as we do those comparisons, we want to see which of the samples is the unknown solution most similar to. We see that it appears to have a concentration somewhere between the one-fifth and the one-half dilutions. This gives us a ballpark idea of the concentration for the unknown sample. To best determine its concentration, though, we want to measure its transmittance. So we see that being measured here. 
looks like to be about 91.5%. Now we see that that data has been added into the table. Again, a transmittance of 91.5% for the unknown sample. Using the decimal form of that 0.915, we can calculate the absorbance for the unknown sample using the equation A is equal to the negative log of the transmittance. That works out to be 0 0.0386 for the unknown sample. We can use the calculated absorbance to estimate the concentration. Since the absorbance was 0 0.0386, it looks like the concentration should be about somewhere between 0 0.16 to 0 0.17. The Beer-Lambert law summarized A equals epsilon CL, with A being the absorbance, epsilon being the molar attenuation coefficient, and C being concentration. L is the path length. Now, rearranging this, we solve for C, we get A divided by epsilon L. Now, remember, the molar attenuation coefficient is the slope. The path length is one centimeter. This is not going to factor into the calculation. Now, using our linear regression analysis, we want to take y equals mx plus b, our normal form of the equation for a line, and we want to solve this for x. So the algebra to do this looks like this. We can rearrange to solve for x, and what we're going to wind up getting is y minus b divided by m. Now this is what we'll use to calculate the concentration for the unknown sample, and we get an answer of 0.172 molar. If you are using Google Sheets to analyze your data, you may run into an issue with getting the wrong equation for your line. Check the chart editor under Customize, Horizontal Axis. The box called Treat Labels as Text, you can see by checking this on and off, I'm able to change between the correct and the incorrect version of the equations for this line. One way of knowing that your linear regression analysis was incorrect would be to compare your calculated results with the visual comparisons you made earlier in the experiment. If they don't match up, it could be because your linear regression was done using the incorrect version on Google Sheets. All right, I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching, everybody.